how to get children who don't want to be cooperative in the play and to engage in activity? Yes. Uh, stubborn children who are not getting involved with games, these children have a fracture that they didn't get it at home. So for them, any other setup, they, they have a reaction against it. That's why I say you have to get the two parents adding heart to whatever else the care center does, therapist does. Did you understand? They have an anger that they didn't get, but they should have got at home. So we have to motivate and heal up the parents to touch the child's heart once again. So we sit with the parents and take this long history to help parents to own up the problem without condemning them. And we go to schools and tell schools also, don't put pressure on the parents. It will back up the wrong way. They'll take it on the child or they'll get angry with the school. So parent and child has to work together. So when a child comes to a care center and is stubborn, the problem cannot be solved in the care center. You have to get back to the parents. What you advise on child with sensory issues and can we are? Again, I'm only aware of this. I haven't, this is not my field. Uh, regarding these ADHD problems, there are two schools of thought. Some think it is totally sensory. I disagree with that school. There, there are sensory processing disorders, SPD, which is true. Which then you, you have a sensory, you know, sensory room, you know all that. You perhaps know it better than me. Sensory room, that's very valid for that. But with real ADHD, that's not the problem in, in our way of handling. Uh, in, about vaccines, this debate is long, unproven. So, uh, vaccine haters hate vaccines. Vaccine defenders defend vaccine. But one has to recognize that emergence of MR, MMR and autism has a statistical relationship. But it's a law of research. Coincidental relationships does not prove etiology. So there it is. Coincidence of appearance does not prove etiology means that that's the cause. You can't say it. But uh, this is an open debate, you know. Yeah. I'm quite willing to give some credence to this. There might, because we know the plus two iron, mercury, lead, cadmium, affects child's brain. We know that. And that mercury was in certain vaccines at a certain period of time, we, that also we know. So when you go to the internet, you get wars, isn't it? The pro-vaccine people and the anti-vaccine people, very difficult to get. Uh, yes. I have a two and a half year old boy who is hyperactive, who will not chew his food and keep walking. And keeps walking on tiptoes. Hmm. He does not chew his food. Yes, how we will tackle this child, for see the parents, and then get him to do the things he likes to do. With empathic learning means get him into things he likes to do. We will probably get this child to do a fruit salad, make a sandwich, get him involved in making a cake, and all the children together then they eat it together. As I said, more vegetables are identifiable, beetroot, you make, you make circles out of carrot, you make triangles out of beetroot, you make cubes out of cucumber, keep telling them that, touch this and see, this is called a cube, touch this and see, this is called a sphere, you get what I mean? Actually not for them to learn the geometry, but for them to uh, wire them up in a way, so they like this also make their own sandwich and eat it also. That's what we would try. Try from an activity that he likes and then overcome what he doesn't like. Okay? Yeah. Get him into some game where he has to walk properly. Think out things like that.
Amy, you have any announcements before we dismiss? Uh, just one more thing. Just take a book, please, and give it to another. Next time when Ron organizes it, bring ten more people who will be related to the topic, either parents who have a problem or Montessori school, uh, Montessori teachers or other teachers. The centers and the teachers and educators or caregivers can do to one extent to help the child. And this involves lifestyle. And like you say, I also work very hard to bring some parents to come here to hear the talk. Unfortunately, they are not responding. I find that it's so crucial for them to come and to hear it for themselves. I find that um, of uh, this difficulty, you know, to get parents to respond. How would you advise this? Give them a book that I have written. You have to be, you have to be parent friendly. Now, when I go to schools, the teachers are all gung ho about this foolish parents. They should have known better that kind of thing. Then I appeal with them and say, look, this is part of your field now. Particularly, the primary school teachers have to be ready for digitally overwired children. And now see, for instance, children were given paracetamol ad lib. Paracetamol pr predisposes to allergies. It alters the natural immune mechanism. This is pharmacology. But at one time, with a little bit of fever, four times a day paracetamol was advertised by a particular company with a particular brand of para para paracetamol. And parents began to think paracetamol is a very harmless drug, can be given at any time, which is not so. So just the way one bad practice that came out from medical professionals or the pharmaceutical world made children to become allergic, they are developing allergies at a rate, you know. Uh, which is sad, and in the digital field, because the children were made the market guinea pigs of the digital explosion, sometime back young people became the, or men became the market of pornography, isn't it? Uh, which is a very vicious field, but digital exploitation is also a, quite an exploitation. So we have to encourage parents that this is not your fault, and there's a solution. Uh, most parents, I think, become amenable if there's an immediately available solution. If it can be obtained within five weeks, so for a moderately affected child, we can say in five weeks they'll see an improvement. If it's more severely affected, five weeks is not enough. Uh, so this last child I told you, parent began to, father began to see a difference. Father had a heart change, we sat with him, he cried and said, this is my background and when my son who is five years old is being told the same thing, I can't face up to it, so we helped him to face up to it. Now he gets involved with the child, they are raising a turtle at home. That's a nice thing about Sri Lanka, you can get a turtle to raise at home. Have you heard of another country like that? So they are raising a turtle at home. So cleaning the fish tank and this, that, the other. And the father was recently saying how nice it has become, how much he's helping his son. And the son is improving. So we have to win the parents. We have to win the teachers. Then by and by change the doctor's prescription habits. I have faith for the first two. I'm taking faith for the last one. Let's put our hands together for Dr. Lali.